<laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the next question here. All right, so the next question reads, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals x squared, y equals zero, and x equals two about the a, about the x-axis and the y-axis, okay? Uh, so the junior tutor wrote, drew out this um, function and where the region is bounded by. Uh, so I'll try to explain a little bit on how to uh, calculate the solid that's uh, generated by this. But first, we're going to graph out this function, okay? All right, so we have our... Um, our x and y function, or x and y axis, so x and y. So our parabola will do by blue, so our parabola is here, okay. Uh, let me make it wider, okay. So let's say this is our parabola x squared, y equals x squared. So the region is bounded by y equals zero, uh, so this red line here, um, so y equals zero, and it's also bounded by uh, x equals two. So let's say that two is here, so it's bounded by this line, x equals two. Okay, so this is the region that we're looking at right here. So there's going to be two different three-dimensional shapes that are generated by this region that's re revolved around the x-axis and the y-axis, okay? And I'll draw both of them, right? So if we are revolving around the x-axis, okay? So if we're revolving around the x-axis, we're revolving around this one, right? So let's draw an arrow like that. And the, and the, um, the solid that is produced from this looks like this, okay? So it looks like a, I guess like a, a ear or something, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it, but it looks like a, um, a top that's on its side, okay? Where it's has, I guess it looks kind of like a horn, right? And so it's like near the uh, origin, it expands outwards and it keeps, to, keeps on expanding outwards, okay? And let me, for reference, draw out our um, x-axis here. So let's say that this here is the x-axis, okay? And this is our y-axis. So it's revolving around like that, okay? So our, if you're revolving this region around the uh, y-axis, it'll look like this, okay? So this one's a little bit harder to draw. Uh, it looks like a spherical cone, except the outside of the cone is hollowed out, okay? So if we were to draw a spherical cone like this, and so the, the, the volume is actually found in the sides, okay? So the volume is found here, okay? And so it's kind of, it kind of looks like a bowl, all right? And if we were to draw the y-axis, for reference, the y-axis would be here, and it's revolving like this way. Okay, so let me um, draw the revolving part too. So it's revolving this way. Okay, so that's part A and part B. All right. Um, so there's two separate equations or formulas that we can use to calculate the areas for these two kind of shapes, and these formulas are dictated by the type of rotation that the region is uh, performing against, okay? So I also preloaded some uh, other images for you guys to see, so it's easier for us to understand. So you have a curve like this, and you rotate it around the X region, you get this weird looking shape, okay? If you had a curve that was rotated around the Y axis, you would get this kind of weird looking shape, okay? Cool. So the integral will calculate if we were to calculate a definite integral of this region, we are basically calculating the area under the curve, which calculates the addition and the sum of very small rectangles of very small intervals. Okay, so there is a proof and there's a derivative that can help us to find the volume of three dimensional shapes by calculating the integral of the area of this region. Okay, so uh, let's split this into two parts here. Um, so let's do orange for orange. 
So for part one, okay, um, we're ro rotating around the x-axis. So the formula for finding the volume would be the the pi times the integral of um, let's say this of the um, radius squared. Okay, so we're trying to find the area of these cross-sectional circles, right? Just in like in two dimensions, to calculate the area, you find the um, the area, the small areas of each rectangle, and you sum them together. In three-dimensional shapes, for this specific shape around the x-axis, we're finding the cross-sectional uh, circles, and we're calculating these uh, the the sum of those small circles all added together to find the volume. Okay, and that's given by this formula here. Um, the volume of the area pi r squared, the integral of pi r squared, but I just uh, factored out the pi, okay? All right, so for um, our other uh, shape, so this is around the y-axis, okay? So for reasons I'm not going to get into because it's a very long description and explanation, we cannot calculate the cross-sectional circles of this shape. So instead, we're going to calculate uh, cylinders, and we're going to add them all together. So we're going to find we're going to find cylinders of small in increments within the shape, and we're going to add them all together. So the air, the the volume for this kind of shape around the y-axis will be pi times um, the definite integral of the uh, width, or sorry, the radius and the height of the um, the cylinder. Okay, so radius. And height. Okay. So that's how you calculate um, these two shapes. And the this equation here is called the shell method, and this equation here is called the disk method. Okay. And you the method is dictated. The use of each method is dictated by how you rotate the region on which axis. Okay. So the general rule of thumb, if you rotate around the y-axis, you use the shell method. If you rotate around the x-axis, you use the disk method, okay? All right, so let's try to, first of all, calculate the, uh, the area for each of these cross sections, okay? So if we look at this shape here, and I'm gonna um, look at this, the cross section is going to be determined by, or the area of the, this circle, is going to be determined by uh, its radius, right? Um, so the radius is only determined by one thing, and it's determined by the function x. So you can see here that um, I didn't draw it really correctly because the x-axis is supposed to be going through here. Um, but the radius, sorry, this is purple. Uh, the radius can be found from the x-axis I guess, to the top, right? And that top, and this height is the y value equals to x squared. So our radius here is equal to x squared, right? So now we have found our radius, which is just pi of b a of x squared squared, OK? Um, and now all we need to do is to find uh, the bounds. And our bounds are from 2 to 0, OK? So these, these are our bounds here. So we're going to use those as for our interval. So we're going to calculate this integral here. Uh, the integral of x to the power of 4 from 2 to 0. Okay. Let's think about this integral now. Okay. So if we're thinking about this integral, we need to find the radius and the height. Okay. Um, so the height of this cylinder, it really helps because I can't really draw this, but I'll show you on, on this one, okay? So this is the shell method, and they use a cylinder to calculate uh, the volume of a region that's rotated around the y-axis, okay? So this is the function that they have here. So they recognize that the height of their cylinder is determined by the function itself, okay? So the height is here from the y, the x-axis to here, and that is determined by this function. And the width is going to be determined by 
the origin from the center to where it touches the curve, which is x, okay? So in the same way, we're going to use that height and that radius, okay? So that means that this equals to pi times b of a. The radius is going to be x, and our height is going to be x squared, okay? So we're going to calculate this integral. x cubed, okay? Uh, and this is going to be 2 pi, sorry, because we're calculating the um, surface area. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have found our, um, our integrals, we can now calculate our integrals, okay? So let's start with uh, or, uh, our orange one first, or our orange shape. All right, so this is equal to pi of um, 1 over 5, x5 to 0, okay? And that equals to pi of uh, 2 to the power of 5 is 32 over 5. Yeah. 32 over 5. And that equals 32 over 5. Pi over 5. So going to our purple shape here, we have our bounds here are also uh, 2 and 0. So 2, 0, x cubed, dx. And solving for this integral, we get 2 pi 1 over 4, x to the power of 4 of 2 and 0. And that equals to uh, 2 to the power of 4 is 16 over 4, that's 4. So that's 8 pi. Okay. Yeah. All right, so um, so that's how you calculate the integrals or the volumes of these two unique shapes using the disk and the shell method, okay? <clears throat> and just again, for the disk method, we're calculating the, 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 the sum of these cross-sectional circles, the areas of these cross-sectional circles. And to calculate for the shell method, we're calculating the sum of in incrementally small cylinders, the surface area of those cylinders, okay? So these are the two equations, and those are dictated by uh, what way, which direction the region uh, revolves around, either by the x-axis, which is a disk method, or the y-axis, which is going to be the shell method, okay? And calculating these integrals are easy. All right, so the junior tutor also did the same solution. Uh, another rule of thumb I guess you can use is if the differential strip, all right, so so if you're thinking about differentiating this two-dimensional figure, so you're differentiating it into rectangles, right? It's perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So if you're thinking about rectangles, it's perpendicular to the x-axis. So when you rotate it, um, it's going to be perpendicular. Then you use the disk method, okay? But if the uh, differential strip is parallel to the axis of rotation, so this rectangle is parallel to the y-axis, and you're rotating it this way, then you use the shell method. And this is more intuitively better to think about because if you rotate a rectangle around a x-axis, you're going to get a circle, right? But if you rotate a rectangle around the y-axis, you're going to get a cylinder like this, right? In three-dimensional term, I guess. So that's another way to think about it, okay? So these two solutions are correct. They just uh, converted to cubic units, um, but I did not do that. Okay, so this solution is correct. Good work and nice illustration. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to question number six here.